Hello people and welcome to follow yet another World Team Carcassonne Online Championship friendly match. Yesterday we watched the match between Ukraine and Hungary and today we are going to be watching Ukraine again but this, this time it's going to be Belgium who they are going to be facing and today we have a sizable match an 8 versus 8 players so um, the essentially an entire team since the minimum amount of uh, required players is 8 and the maximum amount of players is 10 in order to be able to register the team to the competition so in a way we will today witness the whole might of both of these countries and uh, you can see the pairings uh, through the link i posted in the, i posted in the chat uh, provided again by Cargasone ukraine and also you can see the pairings up on the screen right now so pair one we have a nice dicer versus smile then we have moby dick versus stare bravo 71 knives versus bubble brin crafty raf versus saharic fabian mb versus adriar and W versus Nassario, Karkaroth versus Lawyer, and Dave Damis Dompi versus Tania Yu. Um, most of these players I do, uh, I, I would say, rather fortunately, uh, know, by, uh, know by real name, um, since I did stream the um, Belgium Live Championships and uh, got to know quite a few um, new names that I was not, not uh, that I was not previously aware of. But since I uh, do not know all the people um, by their real name um, from these uh, lineups, uh, I will then just uh, try to stick with the screen names. So that's going to be today's uh, lineup, 8 versus 8, and uh, uh, we will be starting uh, unless the chat is, uh, mm, let's say, un unless the chat wants otherwise, uh, we will be starting uh, um, with a Crafted Rav Saharic match. Uh, not really for any particular reason. I just think that this uh, pairing looks um, like, on the first look, uh, looks the um, the most vicious. So, first game, Crafter F. Saharic, and then we will continue however the chat wants. A reminder that uh, if you do not yet have your team registered to the competition, then you still have um, almost like just under two weeks to do so. The deadline for the registers will be 10th or is 10th of April. So be sure to give a notice to your captain or if you are the captain yourself uh, make sure that you are registered Finland should be registered um, in the upcoming days as soon as we uh, as soon as we 
get the final obstacle, should I say, solved, which is uh, that one of our team members still has to create an account to BGA since uh, she has previously played um, pretty much only live games. But now we get to go watch the play and we get to watch all the way from the beginning. So Harik rightfully taking the first castle and Crafter have, um, well there's a, actually already a couple of options he could do. He could just start an, his own castle like this and not waste a shielded tile for a shared feature or he could just do um, the safer move I, I want to say and just attack Saharak's city pointing the city of course uh, upwards which he does in any case um, he will leave the road vacant but uh, there's not much he can do about that. Saharik now, is he going to take the road? I mean, he might, because there are no other roads available. Yeah, this is also completely doable. Uh, starting to block Raf's castle, limiting it to a starting tile and taking the only vacant um, road end for his own projects. Rav, meanwhile, evening out the one-point city that Saharik had. And now... Well, Rav... Well, this is one of those situations where with, with a triple city, you might not be so inclined to actually connect to this to connect to this city but with a triangle since you only have one uh, one direction to really build a ruin to uh, it most likely is like kind of hinting that you do want to um, try to uh, try to actually complete the monastery and uh, you just want to equalize the meeple but let's see what Raf has in mind. Certainly a great tile for, for Raf. Uh, getting the divider and being able to threaten the completion of a, uh, of a feature if he manages to get a triangle or a triple city before Saharik is able to get either one of those. But actually, if you are Saharic, like anything you could put here or here, uh, it's rather uncomfortable. Because if you want to try and uh, avoid, um, yeah, if you, if you want to try and um, avoid the situation where Crafter have actually gets a majority of this castle then you have to place something here but then that's then letting off the black maple uh, like yeah it's letting the black maple off the hook uh, with this situation because as long as nothing goes here then uh, uh, black will have at least two maple invested in it with only like at the, like maximum of nine points like more which is essentially like one blocked monastery so it's not that bad for Saurik even if um, even if he would be losing the mini battle but uh, yeah Craft Raft just abandons his plan of getting majority of this and instead just takes a meeple back now also 
Crafty is forced to use a valuable city cap tile to defend his monasteries, which is fine in itself, but uh, with only one meeple, uh, it's kind of unfortunate that he does not, that he is not able to use the tile more productively. And uh, with the curve that Saharic placed, it created such a such a um, like such a dangerous threat um, for three of Raf's meeples, uh, both of his monasteries, and to this two-point city meeple, that uh, it really put Raf into an uncomfortable position. Because of course, um, you rather defend two of your meeples rather than one. But uh, then, whatever you basically decide, then you are forced to to give your to give a chance for your opponent to to you are forced to give a chance to your opponent to have a chance at blocking at least one of your meeples, which is like you know bad in any case. Uh, well, Raf is finally able to uh, to join Saharic's ruin, getting uh, four points. But now, since Saharic does have a meeple advantage, and uh, for the time being, a rather good one of that, since Raf will be waiting for a road monastery for quite a long time, possibly, uh, I would not be surprised if Sahara it's exactly attacks this ruin which is already worth nine points so completely worth attacking it doesn't need to be finished as long as Sahara connects to it it's gonna be like at least uh, at least 12 points and with one meeple Raf will not be able to attack it with a second meeple uh, which puts him a, in a rather uncomfortable position, because like I said earlier, um, he is waiting for that road monastery to come before he can really do anything. But he does get it. He does get it. And this is a wonderful timing to get it, because um, not only uh, does he get the nine points plus the two points for the other two monasteries, uh, he gets the meeple back and he gets to connect uh, the second farmer that uh, Saharik just placed. And uh, uh, now there is a 12 point field controlled by two red meeples, so six points per meeple, which is not that bad, like for black. But there are also not too many squares where red is able to create more castles to. Like if you take a look, there is only one single like green square, uh, which also is like kind of off limits to red because he definitely does not want to surround Black's monastery. So it is totally possible that this field is going to be worth only 12 points at the end of the game, but it looks like Saharik is having a different opinion on it, creates another castle, opens up the field a little bit, um, and if he just finishes the city, it will be a 15 point field already. And that is starting to look like more of a justifiable investment of two meeples.
another monastery for Rav, fourth one of that, and gets to place it into a fantastic spot right next to his castle and surrounding his uh, previous monastery. And also he is now able to get a meeple back, but at a cost, because now he expands Red's field, creates more green squares for Red to build more cities, uh, which is not and which is not at all ideal for black. He's also really trying to push the threat of finishing this castle, but he's also um, endangering his monasteries for a block. Like Sahara could just go here and block both of these monasteries, because one, two, three, all of these daggers are already out. Wait a minute. Oh no 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 absolutely not this uh, like even though there is only one tile that fits into this square because there is oh no wait 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 oh no never mind never mind never mind there is there are no daggers remaining in the game so never mind forget everything I just said it is a great move blocks this city um, and it will remain at seven points while Saharik is able to just continue building more cities onto his field. So uh, this city cap that Raf got two points with by adding one, uh, one point to his monastery and one point to his, um, to his city trying to maintain the threat of actually completing the large city actually kind of backfired on him i'd say really bad um, because it created more green squares for saharic to build cities onto his field it also endangered both of uh, both both of black's monasteries to a potential block, which Saharik didn't do because uh, he had he had to prioritize uh, to he had to prioritize blocking this large city. Um, but now, just like look at this field: one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven. Well, these are like potential castles, but uh, yeah, five completed castles plus two potential castles. So a potential 21 point field for two meeples and black can't really uh, compete of, of, that, uh, of that field because he only has one meeple and he is now waiting for a, a uh, regular curve to get two of his meeples back plus he has vulnerabilities with this road which uh, can actually be blocked because all starting tiles are gone uh, i don't really understand this move i mean like yeah this there is like kind of, actually there is like almost no potential at all in the in this move because like all the starting tiles were out uh, first of all, so this was a great spot um, to just wait for a road plus city tile and then try to block this guy um, like here. And also, uh, there were no field crossroads. Uh, there was one road monastery, uh, and this spot just got a just got even better for a road monastery for Rav. And it, 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 he doesn't like Saharik doesn't need to worry about a curve going here because Raf because Raf already needs curves here. So whatever tile would go here, uh, it's it's exactly either a straight road or a road monastery before anything else that's left. So this is just. Um, a waste of a tile 
as far as I can see. Not that there were too many good spots elsewhere, but like this just isn't it. Like I think even just just wasting it to like I don't know here and then try to like do something up here so rap won't be able to place a a city tile here and indirectly or like more directly uh, harass this loop road like even that would have been better in my opinion than this because this is just you know void move essentially now raf getting two meeples back uh he is quite a bit quite a bit of uh, yeah he's ahead quite a bit on the scoreboard by 12 points and then this monastery is going to be 18 points more so 30 points ahead on the scoreboard uh which is of course huge and then this city so 37 39 44 points ahead on the scoreboard and then we have 39, we have 30, 27, 19, 18, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so plus 3 for Sahari, if I counted this right. Uh, but he is at a dreamable disadvantage. And Saharic, I think, definitely needs to get this city to his field and to prevent Wrath from getting six point field from here. Um, what else? I mean, Wrath can. I guess do multiple things. If there are city caps, I think yeah, this move might still be valid. Just starting a city pointing north. So let's do a quick count on the city caps 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 uh, okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 two city caps remaining but the Sahara is only you know plus three, uh, plus one actually now. So even if Raf would not get a city cap, I don't think he would have much issues, but he does get it. Okay, so now uh, Saharic is plus two by completing this road. Now if, if Raf just finishes this plan, gets six more points, he's gonna be plus four and he's gonna be up by one meeple. Uh, so he's going to be in a tremendous position. Sahari does have at least one high scoring move, which is getting the, the last remaining monastery, which is a road monastery, placing it here. Five points for the monastery and then um, six. Oh no. Uh, I don't think this is good. I don't I don't I really don't think this is good because like I get the I get the point that you want to like secure the field but you are plus uh, sorry you are minus four you are plus two after this one and you are in a two meeple disadvantage with only one city cap remaining in the deck and like this was the like before this third, this third farmer, this road monastery potential here was great, but now it's actually 
only two points because it's taking this castle away essentially from this field because you're not scoring twice from it and now uh, instead of the road monastery being good for you now the road monastery is going to be good for Raf because it's going to be scoring eight points for Raf so the tides have turned in that sense okay so uh, plus two and now I think dead even on points but uh, Raf is plus two in a meeple count and it's looking very bright for Raf. So plus three. Plus three for Raf. And I think Saharik has to do this. I think he has to definitely get the final remaining city cap if he wants to win this, because there are no there are really no other like that high scoring moves that he could make anymore like maybe taking this city or this ruin uh, for five points but uh, the monastery well there is a six point monastery spot but uh, yeah I Saharic definitely needs the tiles to go the, the remaining tiles to go his way like he kind of needs the city cap to on his next move, he needs a meeple back. Well, he doesn't get the city cap. Raf gets the city cap. He's going to take the five point ruin. And I think with that, he's going to be uh, plus eight on on the board. But oh, I th this might be a mistake because it's adding uh, one extra point to a potential road monastery spot. I think a better one would have been just here because Raf doesn't want to give any extra no 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 uh, not this because this is this is the only thing that this does is that it creates a more juicier spot for road monastery for Raf Which, well, I guess the idea was that it took away uh, like some tiles, like uh, it took away exactly, well, it took it took away one tile from Raf, the um, the field triangle, uh, from placing it over here and connecting the fields. But there, since there was still left this road monastery and this regular curve. Uh, the odds are that Raf will still pull at least one of those and uh, just connect the fields anyway. And now, you know, this one point road just ended up giving Raf the one point more because he would have gone here anyways with the road monastery. So I yeah definitely this six point farmer here or initial six point farmer from Saharic I think was uh, was certainly a mistake an over commitment on the field um, I think if he if he gonna if he's gonna drop third people on the field he should at least wait for Raf to drop a first meeple like before before Sarek drops a third one and yeah and now as we can see the meeple advantage that Raf had throughout the entirety of the end game um, certainly paid of you know, like certainly certainly uh, caused some headache to Saharic with the end score being a plus 15 points in uh, yeah uh, 15 points of uh, difference there
Hello, clear me. Nice to see you here. Let's see who do we want to take a look at next. So we could take we could take Fabian and Adrian. Let's see how they are doing. Um, Fabian has won the first game, so 1-0 with suspiciously low scores. I wonder if that was if I wonder if the if the game was cut short. But that's oh, only three tiles remaining. Well, we could actually if. If this ends up being it one on one, we could watch the decider. So let's see. Uh, plus two points for blue on the scoreboard. And blue seems to have a large ish field. Well, it's only nine points. So plus 11 there. Past monastery 18, 20, 26, 29, 30, 36, 40, 43, 45, 47, 45, 37, 33, 27, 21 21 point difference in favor of Atriar with a quick count so this is definitely going to be a decider game next so we could take a look at that Atriar doesn't mm, I don't think it matters at all where he places the title. It, it doesn't matter uh, in terms of the result. But I assume with this there might have been another city cap remaining still. Yes, there was. Hmm. Uh, Fabian still was able to connect to the large ruin, getting 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 points with this move. So an 11 actually 12 points difference because it gave one point to the monastery so 50 point difference or did I oh, actually I think I counted this monastery as six points so I think 16 points of difference let's go with yeah let's go with 16 see if we are correct at all so 10 oh that's correct this was a 12 point more a 12 point field instead of 9 so 19 points of difference and it is a 1-1 one -one situation between Atriar and Fabian which means that we are going into a decider. I see. We want to see uh, Nazario. Well, we could make a change of plans. Let's see how Nazario is doing. Um, he's playing against Nico Willeman and uh, Willemans. Uh, it seems like they aren't playing at the moment, or are they? Okay, I think they are just about to start their next game. Uh, with I, I. I definitely saw the result of the first game, but I want to check how the of uh, okay. So Nasario 
And da -da 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 -da. so Nasario is winning 1-0 against Nico. And let's see how quickly they decide to start. Meanwhile, let's, yeah, uh, as we wait, let's check how the others are doing or not, because they are, they have started. Okay, Nassario starting player gets the first four points. Mm. <coughs> okay. Uh, Nico starts a road with the quad uh, with the quad crossroad. Could also start a road uh, from here, going straight in. But uh, you know, when when you start a road like this with a crossroad, now there is also a chance for you to, um, uh, like, yeah. Uh, besides uh, just crossroads, then you have a valid use for uh, for curves also, because you can easily make a loop. Uh, Nasario, I think definitely a, a mistake of a move, because like this, then you are just essentially freezing both of your own meeple and your and uh, the opponent's meeple. But with this move, you would be uh, just restricting your opponent's road, but you would be able to continue your uh, own road or just complete your own road eventually by making a loop of your own. Now it was uh, like uh, when you are going for just uh, um, evening out the meeples of your opponent, then it's good in a situation where you are ahead in points, but uh, like being ahead in points by four at the beginning of the game is is not like good in, uh, like good enough reason to be freezing meeples, I think. So, a rather weak move from Nassario in, in my opinion. Uh, I, 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 I don't really like that. I mean, just giving a meeple back to your opponent and to yourself. Well, yeah, it, uh, it does work in a sense that it creates a large space for um, for yellow to create the field and to expand the field um, in in terms of points eventually. But you just like, you know, just the fact that you have used two tiles to a four-point shared loop road, um, it doesn't really, um, it doesn't really strike to me as uh, as efficient use of tiles, even though the outcome of it is the is is the um, field. It just doesn't. It just doesn't feel right. Like I think, like starting the field from here would have, would have been a totally legit move, um, because he like here he also creates um, room for extra cities to come on the field, and but he also creates another monastery spot. 
because uh, Nico already had another monastery spot available for himself, so you could just uh, reserve a monastery spot to yourself, you know, to counter the threat of Nico. Uh, Nico just doing with the dagger the exactly the same move, just uh, equalizing the cities of Nazario, making sure that uh, Nazario has difficult time with completing any features of his own, really. And now, what do you really do? Like, well, maybe you could expand your field. I, I, I think this is the move, because I don't see really anything other, yeah, I, I, I don't see anything else that is like even remotely valuable. Like this, uh, I mean, you could like eventually try to block it, but uh, it's... It's, it, it's a very slow process, you know, one, one move, two moves, and then now you're going to need help from your opponent to make the final move. Uh, no, I don't think this is going to work too great. Because if now, now if Nazario wants to finish the block, he's going to have to uh, give points to Blue City. And, you know, if you haven't already noticed, uh, there is a one-point city of your own in danger that is tied to this monastery. So if you are not able to, to save this meeple, it doesn't even make sense to, to try and block the blue monastery in the first place. This is, mm, yeah, this is a ni rather nice move, actually, uh, like kind of fixing the mistake. Oh, ah, that's that's a powerful move. Uh, that that's a very powerful, uh, very powerful move by by Nico. Um, indirectly finishing his city, just now waiting for one of the five road triangles that are remaining for a six or an eight point city. And then also creating a very nice looking road, which is just two curves and you have, what is it, an, an eight point road? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, eight point road. Just a wonderful tile and a wonderful move for Nico. And like, look at this, you devoted one tile, two tiles, three tiles to block one square um, and to try and block, uh, yeah, and to, to try and block um, Nico's monastery, but like it, it all just goes in vain. Also, I don't really like the move by Nico here, uh, following the wonderful move with the city crossroad. I think, as uncomfortable as it is to give points to your opponent, given the fact that there were still four, all five road triangles remaining, I would have absolutely loved to just add two points to Nazario and limit this square to a road triangle. Like, the chances that, the, the chances that you are getting um, at least one of those five remaining road triangles is like 90 something percent. So it's huge. And uh, when you do it like this, like sure there were the dividers remaining, but um, the chances that you are actually gonna be able to use a divider um, over here, uh, sorry, over here, without any 
any attempt from Nasario to to interrupt the to interrupt that attempt or um, or before Nasario gets any triangle or any triple city to connect to this city is highly unlikely. Also, um, did I say something about Nasario having a one point city tied to a monastery? I did. And, uh, uh, well, it turned out exactly la how Nasario did not want it to, to, to turn out. Uh, one point maple stuck versus an eight point monastery, that's stuck. And uh, again, just look at the resources that the Nasario used to block this square. Three tiles. And uh, then this plan didn't even work like on any level. Because the outcome is this. And uh, also now that this city is blocked, uh, this field is suddenly looking very, uh, very not so good with only three points, potentially six for a shared castle. And upon completion, it would also just give one point to to Nico. So really, a two-point move if if Nasario makes that happen. Um, well, if Nasario now gets a curve, it's gonna be a like almost al almost like a jackpot because he gets uh, nine points or yeah, uh, nine points or three castles more to his. To his field, but he doesn't get it. Because Nico wisely restricts the square to a to a crossroad, and now this situation has turned from looking quite nice actually for uh, for, for yellow um, with all uh, with all of his. Uh, cities and uh, with the field to being quite uh, quite drastic because yellow is only leading one point on the on the scoreboard. Uh, both of the dividers are gone, so the, these are going to be like at most plus two mini battle for a Nasario. So let's say plus three, then plus four, plus five, the roads are equal, the city is equal, uh, plus eight, because the field is worth three points, and just by this it goes down to zero, and then minus four for yellow. And uh, well, really, all like at the moment, the scoring opportunities are largely held by Nico now because he is the one with a non-shared feature, and both players are with one meeple. And uh, well, you know, honestly, that's about it. That's about the scoring uh, this That's about the scoring opportunities that either player has. Well, Nico can, you know, take two points here, but um, as soon as, as soon as either player gets two meeples uh, into their hand, or both players get two meeples into their hand, the player whose turn it is then is immediately going to take this nine-point field for them, for themselves. Which could really be uh, good or bad, because when this 
field gets taken, the player who takes it is going to be in a maple dis disadvantage, um, likely two to one, and it's going to be it's going to have to be very careful with the next tiles or with the future tiles that they have whereas the other player will have one extra meeple in use and is able to actually benefit more from city caps because because they'll be able to start new cities for example like here and try to threaten the uh, completion of or like completion and overrun of a large city Okay, well now that scenario has become reality, yellow takes the field and is now at 2-1 to one meeple disadvantage. Has one city cap on his field, but uh, doesn't get an opportunity to take advantage of it. You know, maybe if I were to be yellow i'd go here and uh, sorry now uh, this way and leave a road monastery spot to have a chance to either score three points and connect the fields or score nine points and connect the fields because this uh, field is worth three points like essentially nothing this field, this field is essentially worth nothing at, the, at this moment. So if yellow can connect his two fields together, then it's going to be a threat. Because at any moment, um, like with, without this nine point field, um, I think blue is now plus seven. And we and he has one meeple more. So uh, really, at any given moment, uh, blue could go like I don't know over here, over here, over here, or something, and just attack the nine-point field. Like now, he could go here and attack the nine-point field. Still one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm, actually, only one regular card remaining. Uh, well, maybe not such a good idea, is it? Okay, just, just a spatial move, limiting the size of the field. Now this field is worth six points, and the meeple count is two to three. So it is, of course, better than two to one than it was just a second ago a two point move that was for yellow because it gave three points to the field but it also gave one point to blue because blue had one point city and yellow had two point city. Uh, meanwhile there is just a big ruin waiting to be just increased in size as the game goes on so that's good news for blue, just able to stack tiles on that city. Whereas Nasario doesn't have a ruin, so he's not able to, to really take any sort of benefit from triangles or from uh, triple cities. Oh, three for now. Okay. That's good to know. I will update the scores soon enough when this game ends. Is it oh, three for uh, Ukraine, right? Okay, Nassario just decides to prevent a disastrous scenario of this 
city actually being completed because there were still two starting tiles left that would have fit into this square. Nico does not even blink and he shouldn't. He just continues building up the ruin. Okay, so now up by two points, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, thir uh, twelve, thirteen points. Right. Uh, yeah, thirteen points, eleven points, five points, thirteen, twelve, plus three points for blue and one maple advantage. Now what's he gonna do with that one maple? Yeah, okay, it takes one point, so plus four and a maple advantage. A very important tile for Nazario, able to take advantage of that one city cap that's on his field. Puts him at plus three for yellow with a maple disadvantage. Nico, uh, I could do this, but it wouldn't really make sense because he is he is indeed in a maple advantage, and any maples that he gives to Nazario are gonna be not um, are gonna be more more useful to. Uh, to Nazario than, than to Nico, even though the Meeple advantage is always going to be plus one for blue, then, uh, you know, of course, the more the more Meeples yellow has in use is going to be more trouble for Nico, because that, ma that means there is going to be more more capability for Nico, um, sorry, for Nazario to fight for fields. So I would dare to say that just adding two points here is is good enough. But is, does Nico think the same? Is he thinking of attacking the, f the field through a straight road? There are still two field triangles remaining, uh, one starting tile and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No regular straight roads. Huh? What is what is this? Why? Why would you why would you give a meeple back to yellow? Because now he's going to be able to do stuff like this, connect the fields and be and have two meeples in hand. Why would you do that? Um I am baffled. I don't think this is a this is a good move at all. At all. Because now he's gonna be having, uh, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, now blue is gonna be having really tough time with attacking the field because it's now controlled by two meeples instead of the only one. And yellow has some leeway to play with his meeples because he can invest one and not worry about uh, uh, about. Uh, um, getting crossroads that he can't use. <sighs> like, is this what you're like making this for? To, to, to just start a new field worth like six points? Uh, I, I can't understand this. 
Well, okay. Well, we roll what we roll. So, uh, what did I say? I think this after this, Nico was minus one, and then this minus nine, minus six with a maple. Nazario with another monastery, which I think he will take advantage of here. Just take the four, uh, five, excuse me, five points and be up 11 points, which is surprisingly difficult to actually muster up in this um, kind of a dry board. Nico gets four points. What does he? I think he ha he still has to get those, even though it endangers the the ruin. But he doesn't he doesn't take him, um, which is yet an, uh, yet more surprising to me. But like, why would you make a four point spot if you are not going to take the four points? If you are just yeah, why would you why would you make a four point spot if you are not prepared to take those four points? Like why would you then just not start the field here where it doesn't make a four point spot? But like Nico is just making just super safe moves at the po uh, at the moment. Which I don't think is the correct way to go because you are behind in points by like I think by twelve at the moment. Ten. And Asario just keeps building the city. Now okay, now you can take the, the four points finally. Um does create a nice monastery spot. Which Nasario might take away. Or oh, just take just takes one point, but now Nico definitely gonna take the, the seven point monastery spot. Nazario gets to gets to finish the castle. Okay, so like 10, 11, 4, 1, 2. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like, is Nasario plus eight? Uh, that's yeah. I think that sounds about correct. And yeah, blue is really in trouble here. I think if yellow manages to get the final remaining, actually no, there are. What am I talking about? There is. There are no regular curves anymore available because uh, Nico just used the final one but uh, yeah um, if I've counted correctly yellow is plus eight and you know like plus eight doesn't sound too bad when you're in a meeple advantage but uh, at the moment it's it's really difficult to muster up just eight points on this board. Plus six. Nazario gets the final remaining monastery. Uh, might even go here, but I doubt it. No, no, he's def definitely not gonna go here. Like maybe he will, maybe here, and even meeple it. Um, other city caps 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, four city caps remaining. So this one is definitely going to get finished and it's going to create a six point field over here. Uh, if I were Nico, I would definitely just go here. And take the city cap away because there are so many city caps left. But he doesn't do it. Instead, now he leaves it for Nasario, and Nasario is definitely going to take it. Or is he? He might just build a new city on his own field. 
because Nico only has two um, two uh, what are they called? Two tiles remaining, and he would be enticed to take a six point field. Uh, I, and he's definitely gonna take a six point field because otherwise Nazario is gonna take it. So the move is definitely here and place a farmer on the field. Nico also needs to keep in mind that there actually is there a dagger remaining with a right side curve. There is. So yeah, the, the, all the more reason to go here and farmer, because Nazario could go over here, finish the city and drop a farmer and get six points and a meeple back. And if Nico doesn't place a meeple on this on this turn then uh, Nazario can just make this, give Nico a meeple back that he could not use on his final turn anymore. And then Nico would be in, uh, yeah, Nico would be then having a meeple surplus. Like Nico is gonna lose no matter what I think here. Uh, plus six, eleven, seven, uh, six, eleven, seven, and after this, minus one for blue. So like n absolutely nothing that Nico can do at this point, I think. But still, I think this is the most precise move exactly because there is that one dagger remaining. And he, come, he takes that. Nasario gonna take four points, and Nico may be able to take one point to his road. One, two, three, and this is the final remaining city cap, I think. So I'm not sure what tile Nasario has in hand, but I think it's not a city cap. So leaving an empty city cap. Actually, yeah, this is. Much better, of course, two points instead of one point. Um, but uh, it's not going to be the saving grace. Nasario actually able to only take two points, I think. I oh, know three points. He can take the field. But uh, well, yeah, he can take the field here as well. So. Minus one, minus five, minus three, minus minus six. I want to say the end score in favor of Nasario. Hopefully, I'm not too far from the truth. Okay, so. Minus uh, plus three, plus eleven, a twenty one point field, so ten. Okay, so a no, we hold up, hold up. Oh, Ooh. just winning by one point, a lot tighter than I actually thought. Yeah, uh, just another reminder that uh, do not trust me too much um, with the commentating. I'm trying my best, but I do a lot of mistakes, it seems, in point counting. But I think that was the second win for Nasario. And with that, it's gonna be another point to Ukraine. So let's do Yeah, so what 
04 to Ukraine at the moment. Holy. Um, okay, so. Let's do it like, let's try actually doing it like this. Nasario, I will just do like um, yeah I will try to um, to post all the results in the chat and uh, try to update those um, like hopefully as soon as I can we'll have a little break from the commentating um, to be able to do all the to all to update the scorings. So Tania also O2. Um, o2. Oh. Only crafter have remaining, but if it's one five, there's there's going to be two matches still going. And let's do one and two. Then let's see. So lawyer one. His games. Uh, is it O2? It is two. Uh, it is one and two. Let's. Do, oh, okay, one six. <laughs> well, Ukraine is on fire at the moment. That, then the next one, Nazario, Fabian, Atrier, and I think Atrier did win. No. Ah. Atrier, Fabian, O2, uh, sorry, 1, 2, do that, and do this. And O oh, four. <laughs> okay, let's see about Pavel Brin O oh, two as well against Carl Verhaden. Wow, this is looking really <laughs> just just a devastating um, result. I mean, of course, it's it's a it's a friendly match, so it doesn't matter that much. But uh, it's it's very nice to look at if you are if you are one of the Ukrainian players. Star Bravo. Okay, so Mobilik getting point on the scoreboard for um, for Belgium one and five and then smile with one two. And this is going to be the final one. So one, two, and then update the score to six and one. And now the final one, uh, Crafty Raf Saharic. 
uh, I believe so. Yeah, it is 1-1 one, one at the moment. And then let's see how they are doing. Okay, final featured game 11 tiles remaining. Is zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Okay. Um, two points of difference in favor of black. Uh, 10, 12, even. And a lot of fields. 21 for black. Um, 12. And then a large field. So 9. Plus 15 for black. Because... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, this is not... Uh, connected to the large field. So, yeah, 20... Actually, 21 points of... Oh, Something like that. 21... Let, let's say 21 points <laughs> in favor of of, uh, of black. Do I believe that? Oh, no, no, no. I, that's, that's definitely not right. Uh, okay, quick count. Uh, 11, 20... 22, 28, 19, 12, 9, okay, plus 9 for black. Let's call it at plus 9. And um, Saharik needs to find a way to attack the field. Like, looks like there is a rather good spot over here. But it's not Saharik's turn, it's Rav's turn. Is there a starting tile remaining? One, two, three. There is a starting tile remaining, so Saharik possibly can get a second meeple to the field from here. Which means that uh, there's all the more reason for Rav to attack from here. I assume he's just at the moment counting the amount of tiles that he can make the connection with. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. There is one regular, no, not, um, there is one road monastery. There is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There is one, one uh, regular curve. I, I'm very surprised that Raph didn't go for this. Because it's like in the end, it's a 12 point field. It's very significant. But since Raph was, what did I say, plus 9, so now plus 14. So even if Sahari gets to this field, it's going to be like a, a 12 point move, and Black would still be plus 2. And if Saharik gets to the field through here, it's not going to be a 12 point move, it's going to be a plus 6 move. Because Saharik is getting 6 points from these cities already. Well, Ref would have gotten the final remaining curve, but since it does not matter, if he attacks the field or not, he's still been, he's still gonna be in a lead. But I think I think he definitely still has to block this connection. I assume there are some sort of tile combo that can get Saharik's second farmer to the field, and this field is gonna be I think actually the only. The only saving grace for Saharik to make any large point. Like I guess there is a chance to attack from here if there are tiles to do it, but that's nine points. And why would you try to attack to a nine point field when you can attack to a 12 point field? But it's looking anyways like Saharik is in a bit of a predicament here. OK, 
Okay, just adding one point to the monastery, but like this isn't important, is it? Like why are you not just taking away the attacking spots to the to the field? Just eliminate all the possible spots for your opponent to make points, so you don't have to worry about anything really. Just add two points. And I mean, Sahara could have again just went for the field because he needs points. He has to score points. Just the six points are not going to be enough, I think. Yeah, four points for Raf. And then there is a starting tile, I think left still in the deck and then something else uh, let's see one two three four five six seven eight no triple cities one two three four five six seven eight nine ten no triangles um, oh yeah, the road monastery. But Saharic again giving a road monastery spot that is useful to Rav worth seven points joining these farms together. Uh, oh, okay, I'm about seven points is there a better seven point spot somewhere i mean yeah well there is a seven point spot now so it doesn't really matter that there is this but okay yeah so the yeah re the remaining tiles are just the road monastery and the and the starting tile um either of those going to be Good for Saharic, but not good enough. Raf gets the road monastery, taking seven points here or here. And uh, Saharic gonna be with the starting tile. So actually, if you are uh, if you are crafty, do you go actually here and take the road? Um, because the starting tile is gonna go here. Uh, it's gonna give four points to Raf, but uh, an extra castle to Saharic's field. So nine, eight points. Oh, uh, sorry, nine, five. Nine. So it will be a nine point move if Saharic gets the road, but uh, if Raf takes uh, a monastery here, he's going to be at minus two for the for the last moves. But if he takes this, he would be three points. He would get five points for the road. Uh, okay, so if he goes here, then three points, and then this would give him six points, and then six for Saharic, plus six, so nine, plus six, so twelve. So it would be a six point move. Uh, and it's too complicated, too complicated. I, I can't be asked to do this at this stage of the of the evening. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, um, Raf does win and uh, does get a, a, a the, 
that does get the second point for Belgium. So there is a bit of consolation there. Still a very convincing performance by Ukraine today. Dun, da, da, da. And two and six. Nico was saying last time against Ukraine it was 06, so we are improving. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, slowly but surely. That is, you know, maybe it's because just of the sheer amount of uh, just because of the sheer amount of players that you guys brought. Like you know, last time 06, and now because you you guys brought two extra players, you know, won two games. Is there a connection? Maybe. So, you know, just imagine like 12 versus 12 players, just, you know, a 6-6 six, six result. You can call it even, you know? Yeah, exactly. Next time we will play six versus six. So uh, yeah, at uh, twelve players. I like the sound of that. Unfortunately, uh, there is an issue with with like huge matches like this that um, there is only so many games that I can actually feature uh, because obviously they are all being played at the same time, and uh, we can uh, and we only have. Uh, maybe like three matches, maybe four if we if we are lucky. Uh, yeah, maybe four matches to feature before um, everyone has played their matches. So I uh, can't see them all. And yeah, um, today we were um, watching, I'd say like mostly, uh, Crafty Rav and Saharic since the first um, game that we featured was also... Um, exactly those two players. But maybe uh, for the future, I will remind myself. Uh, I will try to remind myself that uh, um, Saharic and Crafty might be um, a little bit like slower-paced players. So uh, maybe those would be uh, good to feature at. The, like towards the end of the stream. Hello, Crafty. Let's see. So, um, if some of you are not, um, yeah, if, if some of you are uh, not aware then uh, Carcassonne Ukraine has um, or is rather um, hosting this uh, website called Carcassonne.gg which acts as like well sort of like as Carcassonne news at this point um, so whatever like worthwhile mentioning is happening on the scene it is uh, like this is this is the website that you might want to check like first um, because chances are that uh, it um, that that the event that you might be looking for is featured in here um, in one way or another if um, if someone has given a tip or a hint um, of that said event to uh, to Sergei uh, Zakarenko, um, who is the like the, let's say let's say the main host of this website. I'm I'm not sure what what uh, he wants to have as his like you know official title, but uh, um, you know I I call him by by many titles. <laughs> Yeah, as you can see, um, the next ones are going to be um, so today, uh, Belgium, Ukraine, and uh, 
let's actually see from here. So um, on uh, Saturday, yeah, yeah, Saturday, uh, it's going to be Hong Kong versus Belgium uh, and at uh, 14 UTC. And then two hours later, um, we are going to have a Finland versus Croatia. So the, um, the two um, debutant teams of this of the, of the season of uh, World Team Carcasson Online Championships. Actually, I'm not sure if Hong Kong is a debutant. Um, maybe someone can um, can enlighten me. Has Hong Kong taken part on previous years? I might be I might be wrong in saying that it is a debut, but uh, you know uh, you can't can't know if you don't ask. And then on 2nd of April, Spain Catalonia streamed by Carcassonne, uh, streamed by Carcassonne Spain. And then 3rd of April, Ukraine Spain. Um, I might be and probably will be streaming um, more of these matches still. Since, since I have the time and since um, no other streamer has taken uh, the liberty of announcing these, uh, these matches to be streamed. So maybe I can uh, take advantage of my quote-unquote duties and uh, feature these matches. I don't think I'll feature Hong Kong Belgium because I can't be sure that it's over after two hours, although it likely will be. But I gotta be uh, I gotta be ready for the Croatia match. Uh, yeah um, at 16 UTC and I gotta you know put the Finnish players in bay. Um, just to be able to prepare and make sure that uh, they don't fool around. I'm gonna keep I, I'm gonna keep a tight leash in a you know in a friendly way. Hong Kong is a regular. All right, so I am mistaken. Thank you for the clarification. That's gonna be it for today. Um, do jump by to, to to the matches of Hong Kong and Belgium or to the Finland Croatia even if those would not be streamed. Uh, we will we always love uh, the viewership just um, in game creates just that extra bit of uh, of pressure to to all the players who are, who see the bunch of names that are watching. And judging from the uh, from from the sidelines, you know. Yeah, well, if Raf doesn't play and Nico doesn't play, the games will be over in one hour. Uh, yeah, well, well, we'll see about that. I will likely be watching that um, I will likely be watching the Hong Kong and Belgium uh, match myself even if I would not be streaming it so we'll see about that but that's gonna be all, it all for today I will see you hopefully rather sooner than later with some more Carcassonne content bye for now